Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, the founder of The Complete Herbal Guide. And today I'm very excited because we have a wonderful guest today to introduce to you. This is Mahani. She's a meditation teacher and a yoga group guru. Her story is an inspirational one about going from poverty to degradation to a world of acclaim and riches and then to poverty and ostracism. So Mahani might seem very wildly fictional to a listener, but she says that her scars and, and um, turned into a spiritual awakening, and she has a story to prove it. Now, living in Los Angeles, she was born in Florida to hippie parents uh, that gave her to a yogi cult leader. Now, Mahani is in her final stages of a two-year project to write her memoir, and tentatively titled Queen, A Woman's Journey from Sexual Slavery to Radical Forgiveness. Mahani is a yoga expert and meditation guru, and she's living in currently in Beverly Hills, California, who has a unique way to assist you in your path of healing and spiritual awakening. Now, it's really important um, to, to her to step out of the shadow of a yogi past into the light of being her own queen. And she's going to explain that all to you when she tells her story. So, Mahani, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm very excited. I was looking at your material, and it's truly your story is amazing. So, why don't you introduce yourself and tell everybody who you are and what you do, and you know, intrigue them like you have intrigued myself. <laughs> Hello, everyone. So, yeah, my nickname is Mahani. My name is Mahan Kiran. And I was born in the Kundalini tradition, raised by my parents had an arranged marriage. They were followers of Yogi Bhajan. And for 45 years, I was really in the belief that I was going to be the spiritual master, but only because of my teacher was ordaining me a master. And... I really had a big spiritual ego. <laughs> I had, I thought that I was from this spiritual ego that somehow I was better than somebody else. And that it was really from, from birth for decades, I was trained, some could say groomed, handpicked by um, this spiritual or so-called spiritual man to follow in his footsteps. Wow. And then two years ago, kind of when COVID hit, I realized the extent of the abuse that I endured for a long time and spoke up. And it really, uh, it would, that was the hardest part for me to, to realize that everything that I had been like I was still promoting this man in my work um, right. on my wall. He was on the wall in my bedroom. Wow. Is Now, did you feel like now um, your parents gave you to this, this leader or meeting that did you, did you live with this person or were you just in your home with your parents or how did that happen? He like would come to our family home when I was a young child and sleep in my parents' bed. So he would go to different ashrams around the world and then the families would host him. And oh, my, I see. we had a big, it was a big house for one family, but 28 people lived there. So wow. <laughs> it wasn't we had a little corner but by the time you know people moved out and then my parents had their own bedroom our family had a room and my sister and it was the the main room of the whole house so we would move out of our room when he would come to town every year and you know it, it's a longer story where he would se sent us all to India and separate us from our parents but I did live with him for nine years. I was sexually assaulted and then in a sex harem for nine years. Wow. And I didn't tell anybody. So that that was what I spoke up about um, because there was a very secret life once the doors, the bedroom doors closed. Wow. And what's different than like other, you know, like it was so he taught like no premarital sex, don't shave your legs and armpits, don't even trim your hair. But the life that we lived when that same man who was married, you know, didn't believe in divorce for the communities, 
So just to give the the readers and to you an idea, like hundreds of followers would just do anything he said. He would arrange all marriages. You know, anyone who wanted to get engaged had to go see him. It was it was very much a, a community, but we gave all of our power to this man. Now, did your parents' parents were in in this as well, or is it just this yeah. all started, it started from your with parents? My parents. It started with my parents. They were kind of hippies and they met at a yoga. I see. Table and gotcha. they, they got married and three days later, they hadn't known each other and he matched them up like in a group wedding. Oh, okay. I got it now. Wow. And and now as growing up, sometimes when we're in an environment, you know, we grew up a, a dysfunctional in a dysfunctional um, environment. We don't really see it as dysfunctional because- okay. Everybody else is doing it and we think it, the rest of the world should be doing what we're doing. Now, did you go through that phase? Well, in I when I went to boarding school, yes, I was nine because everyone there was doing the same thing. But before that, I was, I mean, I was in Florida, central Florida wearing a turban. No, wow. my entire family, you know, wore a turban and the men had long beards and all white. So I knew I looked different than everyone in my second grade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew my broccoli and rice, like, like yeah. my thermos that yeah. smelled like junk food was not like the peanut butter jelly sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew I was different, but I, and I hated being, I just wanted to be so throughout my life. And it's even now, like, I just wanted to be normal. Yeah. The quote unquote normal. I get that a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So I knew like from, but it, it was more like we're different. So, and that's not good. We'd have, I'd come home just from school and eggs would be thrown on our garage door. Oh, wow. A, a Q-tip head and diaper head by the kids at school. So yeah, it wasn't a comfortable, you know. Definitely, definitely not. But then after that, like once I'm 10 teens, I'm, I'm around camps that everybody looks and dresses like me. It was normal. It was right. like, this is my family. This is yeah. my family. This is my leader. Uh -huh. Everyone, everyone is treating this leader like a king and right. he knows the thing. And yeah, so that was normal to me. So now you said that you developed. Now, did did you get married also to someone that paired up with and you? He passed away. I did get married. Yes. Now, did you get married to someone of your cho chosen choice, or you were no, kind of? It was, it was arranged. Yeah, I see. So then you went into another dysfunctional relationship and it kind of just cleared on. Now you said during COVID you had, you had the courage to, to speak up. Now what happened during this time that actually changed your whole viewpoint and gave you the strength to actually speak up for yourself? Well, I mean, definitely an impetus was another woman, uh, from 30 years prior who had been, she was actually coming to my parents' home with this yogi and in a relationship with him then when I was being, you know, a toddler. Yeah. She published her book and spoke about her relationship with him. And that really rocked the Kundalini community. It really, with the Me Too movement, with all the other documentaries about yoga leaders and cults. Yeah. And normally, you know, that, and that like, it was like, and I had, you know, told a close friend of what had happened. And I never thought that I first that I would speak up that people would believe me, like if I was the only one speaking up. So I had just become so used to lying. I had, I had just in in this Stacy, I had developed this debilitating, acute, chronic nerve pain in my head that oh wow, felt like like my brain was on a frying pan 14 hours a day and my full-time job was to get out of pain I was yeah. spent and I nobody after a literally I have stacks of doctors and hundreds of thousands of dollars nobody asked me if I had been sexually assaulted for nine years wow so and you know the, that that itself could just do it to you as well you know the the trauma you know that could so, you know the stress, the trauma, all those emotions that go in with, with that. Now, why were you, when you were getting sexually assaulted, what fear has made you hold back and not come out and tell somebody or go to an authoritative or an organization and say, Hey, something's going on. You know, I'm, I'm not I being thought, right. 
I thought, and this started when I'm, I was 20, he was 65, but he was like the whole world. Like, so just, it's like, I don't know how to compare. Like, I believed in my entire being that by serving this man in right. any way, shape or form yeah. was serving our community, was serving, was guaranteeing my future. He was promising me I would own oh. Yogi T Empire. I would, I was getting jewelry. Like I, yeah. All the women around me are doing the same thing. They're yeah. older than me, and they. I'm like, okay, this is what we have to do. Like this is normal. So it became it 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 became normal. Yeah. It, and that was what was so bizarre. Like no, I I understand what you're trying to say. Not, it was my day. It was go to work. So I worked all day long. I went to college and got my undergrad and my graduate degree in accounting. Most people think I'm just a yoga teacher. I have a master's in accounting and passed the CPA exams. Worked in financial management. So I worked for these companies um, during the day and at night. Would service him you know, but it was weird. It was weird. I don't know if we're allowed to, I guess we can talk about sex, but it was yeah. intimate. It wasn't sensual. It wasn't what I wanted. Right. It, it was very clinical, mm -hmm. very secret. Right. Uh, some things were, shouldn't have happened that were just, you know, don't really want to get into, yeah. detail, you know? So and then, then when he passed, he, he, he's been dead almost 20 years. It was me holding the fort, bearing the flag of Kundalini yoga and spirituality. And I'm a leader. And I, you know, he had promised that I would be even the spiritual leader. So when he passed, I'm like, and I was kicked off all the boards, you oh, know? Wow. So, so all these promises were like exploded and they're like, you know, who am I? So, so the yeah. biggest thing is like, well, if I'm not, if I'm not special, if I'm not spiritual, if I'm not his successor, if I don't own anything, like, then who am I? Yeah. And, but I, I was this person, a single mom with insane pain. And I started, I hated myself because I'm a healer and I couldn't heal myself. Right. And and then by speaking up, it really brought everything in the public, in my community. So it was honestly a lot of re-traumatization. Yeah. Of years. Um, but, but I feel free. Oh, definitely. I could see that you were clearly repressing your emotions because you were in everything, an environment. Everything. Where you... everything. I was repressing everything that had happened. I was lying to myself and to, to, I mean, I'm sitting on stage with, with a decent amount of people taking yeah. my classes and, and promoting this man, quoting him, knowing what he was doing, but, oh, quoting, like, follow this, do this. And the yoga works. That's the odd thing is there's some beautiful, right? There's, yeah. Oh, definitely. And some people, and some people say, well, how can you practice? And I, and I compare it like. If, if the best pizza man, you know, makes the best pizza and he does something or she horrible, you're still going to eat pizza, but just maybe not at that shop. Exactly. See, you were put in a dysfunctional situation, a cult, no less, like a cult, but yoga and meditation in itself is a very, it's a, it's a healing, it's a, it's healing, it's soothing, it's connection with your mind, body, and soul. It's fo helping you focus It's helping you see the world in a better light. It, mm -hmm. It's giving you the power to get, move forward. Now, because you're, you're doing that, you're able to survive. This is what I'm getting. It's, it was the unhealthy cult that you were in that was destroying you as a person but right. not the yoga, not the healing, you know, right. and the meditation. That's what to me was saving you was the, the okay. practices of yoga and, and meditation. Now mm -hmm. explain to me the, the type of yoga and meditation that you do, because it, you know, it's a little, the, the wording is a little bit different and it seems a little bit different than your normal everyday yoga. So, yeah. yeah. So it's Kundalini yoga and Kunda means coil. It It's also like this 
your own infinite power that's in the yogis in this dates thousands of years beyond this different forms of yoga right that kind of branch out yes and, and teachers but but it's it's life force that's like your own and eternal power that's and it's an actual physical manifestation of energy that they believe is at the base of your spine and that by moving by awakening by doing mantras um you awaken this energy and this power of of self-mastery so it's a yes. beautiful concept it's a beautiful right there's different movements and um so so he brought this and it was the tradition that we grew up was like this is sacred and secret yoga that only a few masters learned and he's now bringing it yogi bhajan to america to making it public so it was like this kind of mythology of wow we're so lucky he's this brilliant master and he did thousands of lectures. They're all recorded. So there was such beauty and in, in depth in in the series and the postures are called kriyas. And you know, but there's also this this thing that they can only be taught how he taught it and in this this order. And that's, you know, that's what Kundalini Yoga is. But with the internet, with thousands of people going through teacher training. You can find Kundalini Yoga at Equinox now. You right. It. There's celebrities doing it. There's Kundalini Yoga with disco and chocolate. There's kind of like, like yeah. yoga is like yoga really is. I like to say like McDonald's, but in a beautiful way that it really is accessible almost on every block. Yeah. Um, but in that same place, I believe it has been watered down. I, in, in a lot of the traditions of, of how to align to self, what, what is that experience? What is that? Like, you know, you don't have to wear certain colored yoga pants. You don't have to like put, we always had to wear our hair up and long hair and turbans. If you didn't do that, you're not spiritual. So that's part of my own self of like, am I spiritual? If I, you know, right. have hair down yeah <laughs> and so so there's a lot of layers of like misbeliefs and so so the yoga yeah I mean I think any if anyone can experience their own self that is union and that that can come from any breath work any hobby any walking on the beat you know like that's yeah. really it went we're all wanting the same right we all want to feel good we, we all want to feel good like definitely ourselves. I see your book like empower yourself back there like yeah we just that's what we want right, right. yeah so, um we want to be intuitive we don't want to be stuck in our negative minds no that will destroy us right so so yeah I mean yoga meditation is beautiful and yeah so it's it's been quite a last two years um it's been so it's only been two years that you've been you know you've released yourself from this cult and and actually started living a quote-unquote normal lifestyle that you wanted to live but didn't realize that you had the capabilities of getting out of that and living that lifestyle and it's interesting you say out because i i still feel like i still want to connect to the community i've been in a process of forgiveness yeah um well forgiveness is important you know yeah. if we don't forgive people don't realize people hold grudges but we need forgiven and and forgetting it takes off the that baggage that we hold all those pains all the suffering that we've had caused by whatever reason or caused by one individual or several individuals if we carry that on our shoulders i think i think holding grudges can destroy you more than anything else you know it's when we forgive and we let go we feel a, a relief. i was so bound up and so like in this internal when i'm all about i'm very good at teaching meditation and helping people awaken and right and in my own self when I looked in the mirror I was like I don't like you very much yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> and at least I now I can lot you know like be yeah. vulnerable and honest like and the biggest gift was was acknowledging that I had that ego acknowledging that I am still light if I'm not any title or right 
you know, if I don't, they don't give me my certificate after 27 years to right. be a healer, you know, like, well, I think we go through that stage of denial and then we have to accept the, the situation and then we have to learn how to accept what's going on. And then once we do that, we could start working on loving ourselves and loving who we are and then making changes so we can love each other and can look in the mirror and, and like that person, that person we actually see, you right. know? and not what I should have right what I thought I should have been right you know I think everything happens for a reason and you know we don't we may you know someone may have told us this is the path you're supposed to take but not necessarily it's what the path that is intended for you the path you know I think everything happens for a reason and you know you actually saved yourself by leaving there and you actually took the good things that you've learned and actually kept it with you the things that helped you it seems you know get through everything yeah now yoga the the, the yoga that you do is, is it different than the yoga poses the, the standard yoga poses and the, and the standard yeah. yoga that we do regularly you know uh -huh. with all the other types of yogas and stretches yeah, the, the vinyasa the hatha the angar they all kind of have more of a stand not necessarily standing but but a flow or certain postures mm -hmm. with the body. Kundalini yoga is a lot of different movement, like, you know, putting yeah. your hands on your shoulders and kind of rapid moving, a lot of breath of fire. Okay. Uh, a lot of use of mantra and singing. Um, so, I, and then there's like specific things for your adrenals or for intuition or for, the liver or for you know your nervous system or to get out of a bad mood so it's not the traditional flow of downward dog and warrior one warrior two right um, yeah so it, it is different in that way um yeah but it, it's it's starting to become unionized even yoga so i taught at a yoga fusion a few years ago in new york and i was the kundalini teacher at kirpalu and I taught it, you know, so the beautiful thing with Kundalini, we could do something for two minutes. You don't have to go get a yoga mat and do a whole two hour class. Yeah. And do mm -hmm. something really quick, but that's really in every yoga, you could just hold any position, but I taught Kundalini. And then the next year, all the vinyasa teachers said they were whispering in my ear individually. Don't tell anyone, but we add a little Kundalini before. <laughs> oh, like, you know, so yeah. Like yoga is yoga, like, like yeah. just do what works for you. But how do you know that it works? Right. Like right. what? So I love teaching that sensitivity, that self-awareness. Like, how do you feel before you do yoga? Yes. Why are you doing it? Mm -hmm. What do you want to feel? Like, how do you feel? Like, how do you feel after? Right. And how do you carry that off the mat before you get on the mat again? What is, you know, how's your mind working? So the Kundalini has like a lot of more, I would say more mental of where you can observe the subconscious mind, right? Mm -hmm. You can observe your unconscious mind. You can observe the flow of your chakras and see how they're happening when yeah. you talk. So mm -hmm. which chakra am I talking from? Which chakra do you feel like you're listening to me from? Does that so really, when you were speaking about the spine and you were speaking about the alignment, that's what it reminded me of was the seven chakras, you know? And, you know, really observing, you know, um, keeping everything in alignment with one another. And uh, do you now do you incorporate the meditation? Do you start with meditation and go into the yoga poses or do you end with meditation? I yeah, I kind of flow like just um, depending on the the group of, you know, like we could do a heart opener and then do some deep stretching, you know, kind of being sensitive and intuitive to what is the need in the with the people, with the students, yeah. So what kind of benefits do you get from this type of yoga? Like for people who are interested that that sound intrigued by this, you yeah. know, how can this help an individual? Well, just on a very rudimentary way, it can help you de-stress, but also help you to observe what your stress pattern is. So so what what is, how do you experience stress, right? Mm -hmm. So. I what my specialty in the Kundalini world is this meditative mind is mm -hmm. the establishing this because uh, the meditative mind is like a muscle. Yeah. 
people call it like it, you know, Tiger Woods, it's called the zone, right? When you're in the zone and, you know, doing right. Your own- it's the same for all of us. We have that space where we, we merge, we have this, we don't identify with our shoulder that may be hurting, or we don't identify with the stress of our mother-in-law. We, we experience it. We can allow the shoulder to hurt. We can allow, right. The experience of the irritation. Yes. Also sense our breath. We have an awareness of you and I are interconnecting. We Mm -hmm. have So that's my, what I love about, you know, teaching and is how, how you can have an awareness of self, how you can start to observe, okay, maybe I get stressed five to 10 times a day. What are the triggers? Where do I feel that? Which chakra do I feel? Right. Mm -hmm. And people getting stressed about their shoulder and their mother-in-law will hold that pattern differently. Yes. So, so the yoga and meditation and awakening allows those just take those 10 people to see what can I do? How can I, what kind of practice can I do to shift this pattern? So I don't need to suffer. Right. It's just so you don't suffer as much. If we just suffer, there's every book, self-help book is all about suffering less. Every, yeah. Everything in society, every drink now is de-stress. Every deodorant is about intuition. They're called yeah. deodorant right so so we just that's what it does that's what this I believe every form of yoga I practice like other forms and that's I believe what maybe the essence of yoga gets diluted is it's not about the yoga butt it's not about you know yeah who has the better clothes in class or the disco music right how can you feel like you how can you return to experience your essence, your light, that you, you are, you have everything that you need to, to have an amazing day. Right. If you, right from that place of, I am amazing. Mm -hmm. I can, I am strong. I can, I can be present, aware in myself in whatever happens, good or bad, what I judge, right? Yes. Today. Over, learn how to overcome your obstacles, learn the root cause of what's causing the obstacles, and then focus in on the positive aspects and getting then, over those obstacles. Getting over the obstacles, but then sitting in your light, sitting in your joy of self. Sitting oh, yeah. In yourself, sitting Feeling in- like you're number one, you know, looking in the mirror and liking who you're seeing. Yeah. Right. So that's that's the gift that I, I believe this yoga gives. And, you know, there's so many different styles and teachers and different classes and you know, it just depends on what the person is is seeking and at the given day. And yeah. So at the same time, you're not only just doing these different poses, you are also figuring out the root causes and, right. and then that's, that's fixing those root causes. Right. That's, that's my specialty as an intuitive healer. So um, with the yoga, I was also trained for almost 30 years, if believe it or not. I'm wow. And I started when I was 18. So wow. 29 years of, of learning that. So then once you have your own intuitive self, you can start to sense other people, right? right. You can sense how another person's chakra is working. You can sense definitely the pattern in another is working and help them to heal themselves. So that's my path is the healing path of helping others heal themselves and to awaken. And because I feel like once we open, once we connect with our inner self, we connect with our intuitiveness and our sixth sense. Once we, once we are able to understand ourselves and understand how our body, the signals and what our body's telling us, we're able to actually understand others as well. And we're mm-hmm. just, you know, understand their, their energy, their body language, everything, you know, just looking into their eyes and then getting the feel for what's going on with that person, not even having to verbally verbalize it to you. Right. So even say you and I are even now, like we're interacting and like, if I'm upset and then, you know, I get upset, I get stressed. I'm human. Right. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. But if I'm in that, then I, I can't be present for what you're going through exactly right so you have to make sure that you heal yourself in order to heal others because we can't help others unless we help ourselves first right Uh, put on the oxygen mask right the airplane (laughs) airplane airplane industry has it correctly (laughs) yes yes definitely (laughs) 
Now, what motivated you to write this book? Like, tell me the title once again, so everybody uh, knows. And now Queen of Myself. It was Queen and it didn't feel right because there's a lot of other titles and movies of Queen. And yeah. I Googled Queen. I was like, it's not really fitting. Yeah. But then, then I was like, Queen of Myself. And that's so true. It's because I wanted to be the Kundalini Queen and I was promised this queendom. Yeah. And it was so like, you know, just my whole life of like, well, if I'm not the queen, then who am I? I'm not. Yeah. The and so, yeah, like queen of myself and, and it's a journey um, to what is, so, so, tell me the question again. <laughs> no, first I wanted to know, you know, I wanted everybody to know about the title and then what yeah. motivated you to write this book? Like, why did you want to write this book and what, <laughs> what's a little bit of, of, about? Uh, well, I, I really, well, of course, I admit I wanted to be a New York Times bestseller and get on, you know, talk shows and podcasts and be famous. I still, yeah. I still want that. What? Let's just say, who doesn't? Yeah. Let's let that all go because my my book was rejected. The book proposal was rejected. They said redo it. It's not. It's too much complaining and not enough self help. So I, I got depressed and I stopped and I actually wrote a script. And that was how I, like, I could visually see my life and I had never written a screenplay before and I wrote it and that was so healing. And then from then, from that pause of like, you know what, I need to let go of, of finding an agent of trying to publish. I need to write for me. Yeah. I just write it. And I just started writing and it was like almost Valentine's of this year. And I literally 10 hours a day, like I just took care of my child as a single mom and then wrote and I yeah. alone so I could survive. And I just, I was, my intuition was like, I just need to do this. I need to write. I need to write it all out and keep writing and rewriting. And, and just even reading what I'd written six months ago and now I'm rewriting it's like I I need to get more vulnerable more honest with myself yeah not who cares what happened but how did I feel about what happened right right yeah. that's more interesting than the facts and the timeline and like it's right so oh, 100 percent. so it was more than to heal myself and then then it was like maybe there's a path maybe there's a like a journey of sharing like the self-help stuff that I used of maybe this is a self-help book. Maybe it's not like so much tell all, right? Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's really like, how did I really get myself up and, and start to like, and even I'm still in it. Like, how do I work again? How do I present myself to the world as a, as a yoga teacher? Right. I, you know, lit a bomb in the community. You know? <laughs> Well, you know, you, you went, you, you had a very big obstacle to endure. You had to f figure out when all this exploded, who am I? You know, yeah. everything that everybody was telling you were lies. You were lied to by, by so many people you trusted, you know, right. that's huge. You know, people, you know, people could get destroyed just by that and build up walls just, you know, from something like that occurring. And now you had to figure out, okay, who am I? I'm not what these people told me. They told me lies. And now you have to figure out who, you know, who I am, you know, and what do I really, what do I really want to do? So yeah. your friend was like, you were trained to be a, a yoga teacher and spiritual teacher and a healer. Like if you didn't do that. And I was like, maybe I want to make t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what, what, I have a choice. What do you mean to have a choice? I can like, you know, yeah. It was, yeah so. Well, they didn't give you many choices. They kind of told you basically yeah. what to do. You know, that's what they do in a cult. You know, you don't have choices. You have to follow their rules and their regulations. So now you have the world open to you and you could do anything you want, you know, mm -hmm. but it's, it seems like I, when I talk to you, your smiles come when you speak about healing and you speak yeah. about helping others. I so love it. I have an, I'm creating a nonprofit. Well, I have a nonprofit and I want to, my dream is to have a healing center um, where people can come that kind of have like this big, not, you know, that the doctors can't figure out that they're suffering, that 
and, and then they can come back to the beauty of themselves. If I, I can't explain the amount of pain and doctor's bills and searching and different diagnoses like that, that almost destroyed me. Yeah. And, and I have this, like, I can, I feel like anyone can, anyone can heal. It doesn't oh, mean yeah. healing is just coming back to your sacred self. Yeah. Loving the pain, loving, forgiving yourself, for, forgiving myself of what everybody did to, like and happened for, for being stupid for the betrayal, for putting myself in a place to get sexually assault. Like, could I have done something differently? Could I have said no? Like, you know, so, so that's to me. Yeah. I, I do light up and I'm glad you say that. Cause I'm like, what am I doing? And how do I, what's my new bio, you know? And, and I'm yeah. a healer. I, I want to help people heal. And yeah. I think when you, when the light bulb goes off and you, you know, and even just the, the, the feeling of helping one person, the satisfaction and the achievement it gives you, that should there is your true calling. That's how you know, you know, it, it's what you love to do, what right. makes you want to get out of bed, what Absolutely. makes you, you know, what makes you, you have your passion, you know, your drive to want to live, you know, what gives you that motivation? That's your, your true calling, you know, that that's how I look at it, you know. And they are so many people that have helped themselves naturally, people with chronic illnesses, people with, you know, lots of disorders and, and diseases that have helped themselves through different methods of healing. And, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, you know, I think, I think it's over 70% of illnesses are caused by stress alone, you know? So think about that. Think about how detrimental stress is on the body how it could destroy a person you know so you know if we de-stress ourselves imagine the good it can you know it can cause and and imagine how it, it could heal the body you know if the, we can release the stress that is actually destroying us right now have is your book in production? Did you self-publish your book? Like I am self-publishing unless the publisher comes across comes along and aligns right now. Um I'm in another round of editing of getting really honest of like, do I need to does this need to be there? Maybe not, you know? Right. Adding in another texture and layer of the self-help stuff. Um adding in like some really deep healing stuff of how to sense your child. So it's in, I'm editing <laughs> to answer your question. Okay. Well, okay. you know, I think, I, I think also, you know, it, it doesn't matter if a traditional publishing company publishes your book or if you self publish your book nowadays, you know, some of the greatest, you know, successes in, in our society self publish their books, you know, and, um, you know, so many, there's so many cults out there and so many organizations that are just like cults that force people to do things, or even on the internet, they have these groups and they, they actually brainwash individuals to think a certain way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so there are lots of people that could relate to you and relate to what you're going through, you know, and to give a pe people just an introduction of what you went through and then to go into the healing process of how you healed yourself, you know, so it was really by doing the meditation, by forgiveness, and by doing the yoga that it was your main factors of healing? I would say like the forgiveness. I had to actually stop doing yoga for a while. Like, I, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of like if you're a tennis star, like, and you're healing from a whole, you know, tennis drama, like, yeah. like, like try surfing, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. I get that. Oh, so I did some spiritual psychology, like three years. Um a very rigorous course. And I would say the self-love and the like really forgiving working with inner child work, um, you know, like just, yeah, I would say not so much the actual yoga and meditation. It was more of coming back to loving the places that hurt inside. Mm-hmm. So it is basically going back to your past and then learning how to forgive the ones that hurt you the most, right. then learn how to love yourself and love everything about yourself. Those were the, the main love two the things. Story, to love, to love the pain, to love, you know, um, 
doing a little bit of the course in miracles of just like we are all love and yeah love we can you know we can sit in the loving or we can sit in the in the painful memories and I right to apply I still have painful memories that pop up but I don't keep feeding them right you know I I think I think the greatest thing is to is to learn how to let go and learn how to to forgive and to learn how to move on because we can't change the past the past right. is the past we cannot change the past we can only focus on the present. So, you know, in order to to focus on the present, we need to just, like you said, forgive and exhale. Yeah, <laughs> body, like take five breaths. I was in a in an Uber, and the guy's like, "What do you do?" I was like, "I teach meditation." He's like, "My meditation is five breaths. Whenever I'm stressed, I take five breaths." And I just I learned something from that Uber driver. It doesn't yeah. have to be so complicated. Not just at all like take five breaths when you're upset you know it's all about slowing down we live in a rush rush society everybody thinks that everything has to be done so quickly so fast and 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 so much has to be done and it's it's all what you what you yourself are capable of doing and what makes you happy you know I feel like I have to hurry up and finish the memoir so I'm also relaxing about that I'm like take five breaths and you know I think my, my first book, it took me five years to write. So there's no rush, you know, you can, you know, you do it little by little. And the more you edit, the more you see yourself make more changes and you, you come to revelations that you didn't even realize before, yeah. Yeah. you know, and I think the, the healing yourself is great. So if you had to give some pointers now being in a cult, if someone finds themselves in, in a, a cult or organization and they feel trapped within this, this, or even a dysfunctional life and they feel trapped, what would you say to them as advice? If, if you know, if they know they're in an unhealthy lifestyle or they're afraid to leave or they're whatever the fact may be, what would be your advice on how to get out of that unhealthy situation? That's a very good question. Very can be complex, but also I would say, look in the mirror and tell, see your, the light and the love in your eyes and your strength and take those five breaths. And also like really first see and feel your own light and power and love of self. And then from that inner strength, then you'll know what to do. Like then the intuition, right? Mm -hmm. The intuition will come then what to do do I call a friend do I call the police do I like then it's like okay I have that power and sense of self to right act. like I could say what the action should be but no it's like come into like your power and your sense of like right right and, and then just trust that you you know that you are the you are the the queen of yourself the king of yourself right yeah like, like there's nobody that has power over you it may appear right that you've given right yourself over because that's what a cult is right you've given your sense of self your yeah. making process is in the group or the person leading the group so so to reclaim that and then from that to be safe right to like there's a lot of you know depending on the circumstance but um to you know i would say find somebody that has been in a similar situation now would you find that what what was the main thing that gave you the strength because so many people i would think are they they have fear and they have the lack of of strength to actually make that move to get out of that unhealthy situation where did you find the biggest thing that helped you gain that strength to overcome and to be able to, to move forward and get out of that unhealthy situation? I mean, my daughter, she's almost 16 and she wants her privacy, but she said, mom, I would have spoken up at the time, but you didn't, but now's your chance, you know, and that's like wisdom from a teenager. And yeah. Um, she gives me strength to you know, like I want all the women to be informed of, you know, like and the and the men, right? Like mm -hmm. no matter any circumstance of the your work environment, your school environment, feel your own power. You are your own amazing self. Yeah. Right. 
like to, oh yeah so that gave me inspiration the other woman's book gave me the permission because then there was a platform to to for people to believe and then yeah i think it's and then I'm still working with the community to help of how can we heal. So with me speaking up, a lot of other people have spoken up. There's Good. a lot of people who've been to, we call them second generation, who went to boarding school in India that had all sorts of trauma. I want to, if anyone's listening, my heart goes out to all of you. So it, it there's now this whole platform of reconciliation in the community where hundreds of people are coming forward with you know, the parents who were ostracized by their children, the children who were ostracized by their parents, all sorts of abuse. Yeah. Um, and there's a whole group that's saying none of it happened. He's still a saint and all the women are speaking up are whores and, you know, um, all sorts of stuff against the women speaking up. Right. There's, there's three documentary projects coming out. Vice did something. HBO has done a press release you know, they're doing a four part episode, another firm as well. Um, so there's going to be a lot more, you know, just information and communication to the world about this. And I believe in hope uh, healing. So what gave me the strength to speak up is also like, okay, maybe there's a possibility of a new conversation. So even I believe in radical forgiveness, and I want to you know, I, I don't want to be it like it's my concept, but the me three movement, how can we go beyond the victim and the perpetrator blame? Yes. Of the me too. It, it's still dualistic. I'm a victim. I'm blaming the pity the, party, pity party. So I like, I, I, my heart goes out to anyone who's traumatized or had any kind of abuse. But in my experience, there was so many different other angles than the, the yogi that perpetrated. It was, yeah my mom and the community and my sister and my father and you know like my inner child and so like how can we go beyond right yeah like and talk about like who else is there who should have been there for me there was older women that were complicit. I can sense that you have so much anger because you at back then because they why didn't they any of them help you you know why did they let this happen my boss yeah. like there was a lot of female stuff so a lot of the females on the ranch they were 20 years older than me and leading me into the room and making me you know like yeah just them and the confusion and the like yeah I mean I'm in my 40s I can't imagine doing this to like a 20 year old you know yeah but I probably, if I was still in it, I could imagine, you know, like, yeah, I think, think it was the forgiveness that helped you let go of that anger, because I think it, being in that situation, there's a lot of anger that, you know, when you're, when you're realizing. Better. I'll ask, I, I mean, I wrote an email to all the people on the, on the ranch and said, can we have a conversation? Can, can you say sorry? And it, it's been well I wasn't there or they hire an attorney and I'm forbidden to speak to them and the other signed an NDA and won't say any like like everyone's like kind of you know what up. I don't I don't think you need their 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 words of forgiveness you it's it's you forgiving them the fact right. that you can forgive them is more meaningful you know they're going to be in their world and they're not they have not reached the level that you're at and they may never reach that level but right. you have gotten to a place where they will, you know, they will in the present right now are not in that, in that, on that level. And you should give yourself a pat on the back for that. Thank and you. A, you're Thank welcome. You. And as long as you forgive, that's yeah. all that matters. You could write that forgiveness letter. Some people will throw it in the fireplace. Some people will burn it after they write it and let go of it somehow, but just get it and on paper. With that, with that, just add as we're finishing the forgiveness isn't all airy fairy and beautiful. Sometimes it's cursing and screaming and getting yes. out and kicking. Like there's a, a lot of visceral stuff of, I had so much rage. Yeah. So, so forgiveness isn't like, Oh, this happened. Just forgive, you know, like no. this is just like, you know, Get all of that repressed emotion out. Yeah. So I just want to make that important, like note that it's not just like, whatever happened, just say you forgive them. No, this is like, 
a step-by-step -step process of getting it out of your cells, releasing it from the mind, yes. writing about it, rewriting about it, rewriting it again and again and again, which has been my experience of, you know, until the words are just words on the yeah, paper. It's exactly. I used to write a journal and then once I, once I had everything on paper and I actually felt like I actually got to the next step, that's when I would rip those parts up because mm -hmm. that was, I'm past that now. I finally got over it and now I'm moving forward, you know, and maybe a couple of uh, yoga moves or meditations and you just let out a scream during one of them, yeah. you know, just yeah. let it all out, Yeah, exactly. you know, and just yeah. let it all out, you know, get that anger out. And then you'll see people, they'll walk in the street and you can see they're just miserable. They're miserable inside for whatever reason. And it, there's no reason to go through life like that it really isn't, it's you true. know? So if you had to give some people advice, you know, if you had to say three things to people that have, you know, can relate to you, what yeah. three things, what, co what couple of tips do you think, you know, you'd like to share? I would say, look in the mirror and say, you love yourself or I'm open so I had to say I'm open and I'm open to maybe loving myself that I couldn't say I love myself. Right. Right. Two, I would say find something to interrupt the pattern of stress. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you should do my techniques, right? I'm not here to sell anything, but find a breath, find doodling, find just 10 times a day, find something <laughs> like a breath, like yeah. breathe through your left nostril. Just if, if anyone's listening, right, if they're listening, just for 30 seconds, breathe through your left nostril whenever you're upset or stressed. Right. Take five breaths, right? Yeah. To to modify your own pattern. And number three, I would say forgive somebody, even yes. if it's me that just cut you off in the street. Right. Just say I, I'm open to open to forgiving. Excellent. I love those those tips. Now, do you have any future projects in the works? Anything? What's your 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 new projects oh, that you're focusing on I'm right now? Trying to get the book done. Mm -hmm. I would love to do a scripted project. So I've sent out a query letter, you know, to do my story in a scripted series, like the Queen's Gambit, you know. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. And then I want to. I want my passion, like you said. I'm. I'm glad you're helping me find clarity. I I love healing. So you know, I however I can do that, whether it's, you know, I love healing. So we have a, actually a gift at Equinox class. It's a next week. Um, you can find it on my website. So that's like, if I love to teach people, you know, how to heal, yeah. it'll be online. And I think creating a healing community online and in person. So I'm, I'm just surrendering and seeing where I land, you know? Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And so healing and healing. That's what, and then these projects of the story, you know. And where can people find you if they want to learn about more about the services and more about the healing techniques and your yoga and your meditation? Where can they find you? On my website, mohankiran.com. Okay. Can you spell that for people just so that they have the correct spelling? Yeah, it's M-A-H-A-N-K-I-R-N.com. Excellent. Excellent. So, you know, I wish you the best of luck. I, you know, I, I think that, you know, you know, doing your book, just read through it and just, you know, write from the heart. I think the biggest times that I've had my most successes is when I was going through life and things just poured out of my heart and I just put them on paper. And that's when the, the, my best advice came out during, during my hardest, my hardest upscales and downscales in life, because that's when, you know, I think our intuitiveness, our inner self starts talking to us and yeah. people and spirits start talking through us and, you know, put in all those thoughts and all those feelings, everything that you're feeling on paper, and then make it in into a, you know, productive and helpful way to help others, you know, and right. I wish you the best of luck and Thanks. you have some great, great things is on your website. And I, you know, I'd love to have you back and, you know, oh. you're a wonderful person. Thank you so thank much you. for sharing this event. And thank you for coming out because we need more people like you to share their stories. Cause there's so many people that are going through what you're going through and they're just afraid to, to talk about it. So thank you to you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Thank you.